back and I know that it has been a long time. Um, I think it's actually only been a month, a month and a half, but I know in YouTube time, that's a long time. Um, the holidays, you know, it's just, it's almost impossible to try to, um, at least for me this year, because we've only been in this house for about three months. Um, it's, it was almost impossible to try to, um, record anything and upload it. And, um, we weren't doing school for much of December. We took, you know, most of that month off. And so it's just, it, it was crazy. And, um, I've had a, a little bit of, um, some health issues that I've been dealing with seeing my doctor. So trying to, to work on that and, and everything. It's just, it's been crazy. Um, but I am back. Um, and I've got quite a few videos to, um, to record and upload. I've already recorded, um, a couple and, uh, we start back tomorrow and, I'm telling you what, homeschooling is not for the faint of heart. Um, you know, I began this year in the fall with all of this curriculum that I thought was going to be fantastic and I had this schedule planned out and it was going to work perfectly and nope, it did not work. Um, at least to my expectations and I ought to know that the key to homeschooling is flexibility and I do know that but sometimes I forget and so I have actually um, stopped using some of our curriculum and implemented new things and um, I'm just I'm trying to really find what works for my kids I was talking to my husband the other day and I said you know I really have to um, remember that just because it works for me, I may really like the curriculum. That doesn't mean that it's going to work for them. And if I don't, um, if I don't teach to them, obviously it's just going to be a catastrophe. And, you know, I was getting to where I was, there were certain days of the week, certain subjects I just dreaded because I knew it was going to be just like pulling teeth to get them to, um, to listen and to comprehend. And it was just, it was really tough. And, you know, we're only in kindergarten and first grade and it shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't be, um, pushing this hard for them to, um, comprehend certain things that might be above their level. I still have to remind myself it's about introduction, not mastery. You know, we want to master grammar, reading, math at this point, you know, the big things, but history and science and art, um, those things are more just about exploration, introduction, and that kind of thing. And so, um, and I actually bought a new planner too, which I don't have it yet. <laughs> I'm like checking my phone, my my uh, email account, and I'm like, okay, um, I, I'm waiting for a shipping confirmation. Like, you know, that's what happens when you order things right after Christmas. You know, you've got, you know, every the mail's backed up because of Christmas, and then they're not going to ship out because everyone's on still on holiday for uh, the new year, and so. Hopefully, I will see my new planner in the next um, week, two weeks. Right now, I am actually just using just comp composition notebook. Um, and, I mean, it's fine for right now. Um, it's just there's not a whole lot of space. So, hopefully, my new planner will get here soon, and then I can do a video on that. And hopefully it'll work out a little bit better for me than what I had. I had made my own planner and it just, I don't know. I just, there was something about it that just wasn't, I don't know. You know, I, I can be kind of flighty and change my mind a lot. So anyway, um, let's see the curriculum. Okay. Let me go through my curriculum and let you know what we've changed and uh, what we're sticking with. So, Bible study, we were using grapevine studies, and we finished that, and we really, really liked the grapevine studies, but I um, I have 
some, I have this set, it's called Great Bible Adventures, and I bought it, like, I'm telling you people, like, probably 10-something years ago, way before I had children, but I just, in my mind, I, I saw this, it was like on an infomercial or something, and I was thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to buy this, and my future children, I'm going to use this, and I'm actually <laughs> going to actually use this for the first time, and so I'm going to see if I can take y'all over here. Let me grab it so I don't just walk out of the frame. Let's see if I can set this down without the camera dropping. Okay, so the Great Bible Adventures, they come, they each come with like a little set. It's one story and I don't know how many, I got a ton, I got all of them, I got a ton of them. But um, they're broken up into categories. There's heroes, miracles, um, animals and nature, angels, and then like maybe Jesus stories about Jesus or parables or something like that. Um, so each story, let's see if you can see that. So they're all told on just these colorful little cards. So this is about Noah. And so you go through the story on these cards and at the bottom of each card, there's like a comprehension question. Um, and then when you get to the end, the backs of the cards are actually a puzzle. So your kids can put together the puzzle after you've read the story. And then at the end, you have this little activity to do guide and on on the back, there's um, some more comprehension questions and then activities for family fun. And so um, what I plan to do is I'll copy, since I have two kids to do this, I'll copy this part so that, um, I may just copy it twice so that this stays clean and then I can use it for child number three. Um, so tomorrow we'll start this, we'll, I'll read this, we'll do the puzzle, we'll do the activities. Um, and then each, there are these, um, what are they called? Bible heroes, Bible characters, something like that. But there are cards for the different people in the Bible. And so I plan on kind of like making, instead of like a, you know, kind of like a word wall, only it's a Bible people, Bible character wall. And so this is Noah. And then on the back it has little facts about him, like about what his name means, his family, his home, his job, what he's famous for, and an amazing fact. So we'll do those. And I've got, I've got, um, I've got all of the stories that we're going to be doing this week pulled out. We're starting with Bible heroes, and then I'm not sure where we'll go next. You know, like I said, we've got, there's miracles and angels and nature and animals and all that stuff, but these are in um, order um, as far as um, books of the Bible. So we'll go through the heroes starting in Genesis all the way, you know, I think it goes up to Acts for the heroes. Paul is the last one. So... That's what we're doing for Bible instead of doing the grapevine. Now, we might go back to grapevine um, next fall. I don't know how far we'll get through these because um, I really want to get through all of these. And I think that they'll like them. This will be um, a fun way to start school because it's it's colorful and bright and we're doing activities and it's hands-on and, you know, that kind of thing. And it's more like um, a story, like a picture story instead of me just reading out of the Bible. So that's Bible. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera. <laughs> I smacked the table. Um, history. Okay, here's the thing. I really, really like Winter Promise. I do. I do, I do. Don't get me wrong. But for kindergarten, first grade, it's not working. Um, it's just, it's a lot of work for me to kind of water it down for them. Um, and it's it's a lot of reading. If you go by the schedule and you do everything that they asked you to do, there's a lot of reading. And my kiddos, they like listening to me read, but some of that stuff is just not 
engaging to them and it's another like pulling teeth to get them to pay attention and then even with the comprehension questions like I'm not getting any um, feedback from them they're not retaining any of it which tells me they're not interested in it so what we're doing is I am um, I'm still gonna continue using winter promise but I have found a way to really water it down um i'm just picking like i said when when you buy the winter promise packet you buy all of these um literature books picture books and things like that and so we're just sticking with the books that have bright pictures and are shorter um stories um and we're doing the chapter books in the evening for bedtime and that works out really well they really like those and so that helps too with connecting all of that but um a lot of the um a lot of the activities and then like the the journal it's just way over their head so i have really had to cut out a lot of the winter promise curriculum for us to use. Like, like i said we're still doing it and if my kids were like fourth, fifth grade, this would be this would be great. They would love it. They could read it on their own, you know. Um, but for for us, it's just it's just too much right now. So let's see. We've done Bible study history, art. We're sticking with artistic pursuits. That's working great. It's a really easy lesson each week. Um, the kids really enjoy using actual art medium um, instead of just you know crayons and markers. They're actually using oil pastels and watercolor crowns and charcoal and things like that so they really like that science okay here's another one hear me out I like apology of science I don't like apology of science for kindergarten first grade okay let me show you something okay so this is what we've been doing exploring creation with human anatomy and physiology okay so this book is a great book and it really explains a lot. Like if I, I, I would have rather had this book in school than some of my others. It, it breaks it down and it's easy to understand, but it's not for kindergarten or first grade. Now this says you can use it for first to fourth grade or for first to sixth grade or something like that. But it's one of those things where I am finding that I am, while I'm trying to read, I'm skipping over passages that I don't think they'll understand. And I'm really trying to like change wording while I'm reading so that it's words that they understand. I mean, we still use some of the bigger words like mitochondria and things like that, but they're just, if I do, if I follow the, um, kind of like a schedule that they've given me and do do it the way that they've put in the um, notebook. It just, it's too much text. Um, sometimes it's like four or five pages in a day and we're talking like, okay, this whole page, like trying to read four of those, my kids are not gonna listen to that. And there are activities throughout, but sometimes they're not um, super hands-on. And my kids need, daily hands-on stuff if we're doing science it needs to be you know I feel like for me when I'm learning something if I can read it and then do an activity that connects it in my brain better than anything else so I'm not knocking apologia and we will probably come back to this when the kids are older but right now it's just not working so what I have done is I have gone on rainbowresource.com and I have ordered some Evan Moore science workbooks. Um, there's one over weather, geology, um, what's another one? I can't remember. Weather and geology I remember. But they have, um, they have little um, experiments throughout while kind of learning about um, that topic. And um, they're obviously graded, so it's for, I want to say first to third grade are the ones. I think you can get like pre-K to second maybe, and then first to third, or K to second. I'm not sure, but this is like first to third, I believe. And so 
Um, I'll show you. I'll show you all that the new curriculum that we're getting when that when that shows up. So that's the new science we're going to be doing. Um, and actually, I just ordered it, so we don't have it yet. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in the meantime, until we get that, um, are these. Let me see. They are the Magic School Bus um, experiment kits. My aunt a year ago for Christmas for my kids, instead of buying a bunch of toys, signed them up for a subscription to the Magic School Bus, um, what is this called? The Young Scientist Club. And so every month you get this booklet with all these experiments. It's, it's always a different topic. So this one is about light. So this, this kit is all about light. So you have the experiment book, and then it comes with all of the materials you'll need. Now there are a few like things that you would find at home that you use, and they tell you that. But um, we are going to, we've got like, we haven't used any of them. So we have like 12 of these um, that we need to use. So, um, and each, I wanna say there's like seven experiments in each kit. So this week we're doing a, the kit on germs. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm definitely going to video that. We're gonna make Petri dishes and like grow mold and all sorts of cool stuff. I'm excited. So that's what we're doing until we get the Evan Moore and we will probably, um, a lot of the stuff with Evan Moore will correlate with one of the kits in the Magic School Bus. And so we'll kind of all put it together like that. Plus I've got a lot of us born science books that we'll probably pull into just to sit down and read together. So that's science. Reading, we are still doing um, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. It's going fantastic. The kids love it. They ask to do it. Loving this book. Um, I'm supplementing with um, Bob books. So they read their, their little um, lesson for the day and then I pull in Bob books. Like I've got like a ton of them. You can see all the, the Bob book kits over there. So we supplement, we're supplementing with the Bob books. Um, I feel like I'm like really close. Do I need to back up? <laughs> anyway, um, the next thing is handwriting. We're still using the handwriting without tears workbooks. Um, I'm not doing, it's not the full kit with the the chalkboard and all that stuff. It's just the workbooks, but these books are fantastic. Um, and I can see an improvement already. So I've got one, the, let's see, this is the letters and numbers for me. This is for my younger one, my kindergartner. And then my printing book is the one we're using for Graham, who's in first grade. Now, spelling. Was using all about spelling. And it just, it wasn't working for us. I don't know what it is because all about reading, um, although we've stopped with all about reading and we are doing how um, teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons, we will go back to all about reading once we finish that. I just felt like, I don't know how to explain it. I just felt like the all about reading wasn't going fast enough or maybe not even going fast enough it was just teaching it in a way that wasn't sitting wasn't working well with my kid so we've changed it and so we'll pull it back in um because we'll finish that before um the year is up we'll pull all about reading back in and and try to pick up somewhere in there in level two and see how that works um but we were using all about spelling and it's not that I don't like all about spelling. It's just that the all about spelling, the way it's set up is you have a lesson. So here you have lesson 16 or step 16, letter C and K. And you have about two or three pages where there's new teaching. You can't even see that. There's new teaching, there's review. Each step you're supposed to drag out for five days. And there are, let's see if I can find it. There are 24 steps, so this will be 24 weeks. But the thing is, 
there are some lessons that we didn't even need to do because my son was already there. He already, you know, understood that part. And there's others where he picks it up like that. And then I'm like, okay, so what are we supposed to do with the rest of the three to four days? Um, so it was just, I don't know. It just didn't move fast enough for me. And it, I didn't feel like, I felt like this was more of a phonics review than really getting into spelling. And we took the placement test. So I don't know. I'm not sure. I could just be me. I may not be doing it right. Anyway, so I picked up a different spelling um, program. We are doing a reason for spelling. And we did a reason for handwriting. And I love a reason for handwriting. And um, I just, I didn't pick it up this year because I don't know why. But we're just doing the handwriting without tears. They like that better than the reason for handwriting. I liked a reason for handwriting. Anyway. We're gonna do a reason for spelling. Now it does start out, the first part of the book see, does start out with phonics. There's a bunch of phonics lessons. So if your kid needs that reinforcement, you have that there. My child will not need this, so I'm actually gonna use these pages for my kindergartner because they're really good. Um, and then you start with the spelling part. And um, you have, it breaks it down. So lesson one, and then you move on to lesson two. The first thing you do is you do a placement test. So you read all of these words, and it tells you if your child gets this many right, this is how you instruct them. If they get this many right, this is how you instruct them. And if they get only this many right, this is how you instruct them. And this is the teacher guidebook. And one of the awesome things about it is it shows, um, it shows the student pages. See if you can see that. So it shows the student pages, shows the answers. It give, it tells you exactly what you need to be saying. It gives all of these different tips. I mean, it's pretty well broken down for you lesson day by day. So you've got lesson one, day one, lesson two, or lesson one, day two, lesson one, day three, lesson one, day four, and lesson one, day five. Now, at the beginning of each lesson, you have a story. And this story um, kind of has a scripture to go with it. And um, the cool thing is the words that you are learning that week connect with the story and with the scripture. So um, obviously it's a Christian-based program. Um, so I'm really kind of excited about that. And the, the kids' book, I mean, you know, looking at the student workbook, it's very colorful, very bright. And it's not just writing words and then copying them over and over. It has multiple, let's see if you can see that, multiple games to play each day. Um, there's journaling. Um, they have this thing down at the bottom, fun ways to spell, and it gives you different ways to work on your spelling words. So you've got spell your words with crayons, spell your words out loud, spell your words with chalk, Spell your words in damp sand. So we could go outside on a sunny day with sidewalk chalk and spell our words that way. I mean, that's kind of fun. And so there's, I mean, there's just tons of games and um, activities for them to do with their words. And so we start tomorrow. We're going to do the placement test. And I'm really excited about this um, because I think, I think he'll really like it. We, um, we have a lot of... It's not that um, he doesn't like to write, but we haven't been doing a lot of writing with him, focusing on that, and I really want to focus with that a little bit more. Hold on a minute. Uh oh, I'm busy right now. Okay. Um, so I really want to focus on him writing more um, because we really need to get into... Um, well, there's just with the curriculum, you know, for next year, there's going to be a lot more writing. And so he needs to be at that level. I feel like with reading and math, he's probably on level with his peers. But writing, because it's just not really his thing, he's a little below. And so I need to kind of do more to get him writing. And so I'm excited about that. So that's spelling. And then math, we're still with the Singapore math. And I bought some new Kumon workbooks. Um... They're for my younger one. They're simple edition and there is, um, let me see. Simple edition. 
So, simple addition, simple subtraction, and numbers one to 30. So I'm kind of beefing up her math. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what we've changed out and what, um, you know, what hasn't worked for us. And like I said, the programs that we're not doing right now does not mean they're bad programs and it doesn't mean that they don't work. It's just, I know what works for my child. And, um, when we get stalled, if I don't get him motivated, my older one, um, it can, I mean, it's just, it's just hard. It's, it's almost impossible to get him budge. He is stubborn, just like me. He comes by it honestly. So, Anyway, um, that is, that's what we're doing. We start tomorrow. And like I said, when I get my new um, planner, we'll make a video on that. And we're going to start doing some science projects with the um, Young Scientist Club. And I will, um, I will videotape us doing that. So anyway, thanks for watching my video. And um, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.